prepare for nerdgasm. Hey, what's up guys? I'm going to do another nerdgasm video for you today. Although instead of reviewing some hardware, we're going to build some ourselves. So, uh, this piece right here you can kind of ignore. That's my tripod. And the video might uh, seem a little bit different than my normal setup because I'm recording on my flip video which I usually don't use that often, but uh, I need something that was like mobile that I could spin around, be like, what's up? And uh, get a good good angle on everything out here in my very, very, very dirty garage. <laughs> the man cave garage. Yeah, not, not really much to look at, huh? Oh well. Anyways, barely standing room in here with all the crap around, but I never come out here and do anything until today. So anyways, back on track. What we're trying to do today is I have an Asus Zonar STX sound card and it's got two of the large type I think they're like quarter inch or something like that uh, headphone jacks on the back for both microphone and headphones so I went and got two extension cables from Guitar Center and I got a little project enclosure little aluminum box or might not even be aluminum feels kinda of heavy maybe steel and uh, I got that from Fry's Electronics and the goal today is to drill holes and glue these connectors right in here and then run the cables out the back so that I can double stick tape this enclosure to my desk upstairs and give me two easy access ports to plug in my headphones. So I looked around, I couldn't find something easily that would that would do this task for me. I'm sure stuff like this exists, breakout boxes and stuff like that, but I figured oh, it'd be fun to custom build one and paint it. So let's get started. All right, so first things first, let's go ahead and bust open this project enclosure. It's got some cellophane on it. All right. Instead of having hardware included, let's take the top off. And there we go. We got four little screws inside. That's awesome. So the first thing I want to do is take out one of these extension cables right here. And we're going to see how close together we can get these things. A lot of this is going to be eyeballed. I'm not going to go into any kind of crazy measurements or anything like that. So, let's see. Let's put the first one. Looking at the inside here. Yep, it's all clear. Let's put the first one, we'll say right about there. And then the second headphone jack, just so they look somewhat even. We'll say that's about a little over three quarters of the way in. So go ahead and do the same thing over here. So right about there. And there. That looks pretty good. Do a quick little measurement just to make sure it's not crazy off. Let's see, one inch down from the top or sorry, half inch down from the top, about a half inch, good enough. All right, let's do some drilling. All right, I got a 3464 drill bit. I basically just lined it up with this guy to kind of get a ballpark figure because nothing's exact on the man cave. That would go against the ADHD principles. So, first we should probably use one of them as a punch so we can get a little nice starting point. Let's go ahead and do that. Just find the center there. Give it a good whack. Yep. Same thing over here. Give it a good whack. Okay, now we got like some little starting points. Let's drill and see what happens. One. Clean it up a little bit. Okay. Walking around a little bit. A little hard to get these bits lined up. Nope. 
All right. See, we have two holes. All right, let's see how this fits. All right, had to drill the holes out just a little bit more just so that I could get the metal piece on the end here to go through the hole. So you can see, just enough because I'm going to fill the backside with hot glue. All right, I'm going to drill one hole in the backside to run the, the output cables. Done. All right, this is what it looks like so far. Got two holes in the back, or one in the back, two holes in the front, and uh, let's see how the cables fit. So I'm run this one out the back. Looks like I have to drill the hole just a little bit bigger to get that through. Keep going. All right, so to give you guys the general idea, I have the cables coming out the back, and then they go up here to the front. Man, it's hard to hold the camera and do this at the same time. But anyways, you can see they poke out the other side, just like that, and it's all self-contained in this box, which will be sealed, and I'll paint it, probably black. And then I'll put some rubber, some hot glue around here just to seal the cables in place. All right, time to bust out the hot glue gun. All right, got my hot glue gun here warming up. I got the black hot glue in it which is really good for automotive applications and it'll look good for this project since I'll probably paint the box black but the goal is I'm gonna go ahead and put hot glue on the bottom and then around this as it's pushed into the hole there to hold it and to prop it up and I'm gonna do that with both of these and then on the back here so it's not easy to pull them through I'm gonna find something to stuff in there to take up the extra space from where I put the cables through and then I'll hot glue that in also alright time for some hot gluing Got to be pretty quick with this hot glue. Just get it all in there. Go ahead and let that set up. A little bit squeezed out the hole, not a big deal. We can just go ahead and cut that off with a razor. I want that thing to really, really stay in there good. So I'm gonna even pump more in there. Nice big bead. This is the redneck way to build a breakout box. So I got a big old bead along the side of it there. Let's check it. Looks good. Let's go ahead and do the same thing to this one. Put a starting bead down. Okay. Push it through. Come on. There we go. And fill it up. So I've gone ahead and hot glued both jacks in place, and I'm just letting the, the hot glue cool. And uh, mind you, I've never done anything like this before. This is just an idea that popped into my head when I was in Fry's Electronics and I saw that they had these little breakout boxes for sale. Okay. The end result is I have a box with two plugs on the end that I can put a top on. So now I'm going to get a razor blade and clean this up once it cools down. All right, I went ahead and made a little plug on the back for the two wires out of hot glue and made it protrude to the inside to hold those wires nice and firm so it's not easy to just tug them out. And the two barrels for the sliding connectors, they're actually really, I mean, that, that hot glue stuff's like plastic, so they're not moving anywhere. So yeah, we're, com we're completely solid. Can't push those out of the holes. Can't pull these out of the back. We're good to go. All right, so far so good, guys. 
Got the lid. Everything's all dry and in place and ready to paint. Got the plug in the back. I know it doesn't look that pretty. Um, for you guys out there that are actually a little more focused and have more time than me, I'm sure you can do everything precise. But bring the cables around from the back, plug them in. I'm going to use those as my shields when I'm painting it so that I don't get paint in the holes because I don't care if I get paint on these. That's not a big deal. I'm going to be painting it black anyways. All right, well, let's take it outside and hit it with the poof can. Here's my wide assortment of aerosol cans. Somewhere in here we'll no, battery terminal cleaner, air intake cleaner. No, we need uh, some black paint. I would be shocked if I didn't have black paint in here somewhere. That's belt degreaser. Ah, here we go. Auto spray. Black duplicolor. Let's see, clear. Oh, well, no, that's clear coat. Um, I need a clear coat. Look there, I got more clear coat. Alright, this is going to take some two handed digging. Well, now I'm headed down to the hardware store. Luckily, it's just down and around the corner from my house because I got to buy a can of black spray paint because I started this project thinking I had about eight cans of the stuff. Turns out I have every color but. So I'm going to go grab that and then we can finish this up. Mission accomplished. Flat black. Primer and paint in one. All right, let's finish this project up. All right, guys, I am ready to paint this thing. It's funny, I just uh, I uh, was coming outside to paint it and my wife was like, not in that shirt and that jeans because I had my nice clothes on, so she made me go and change. But uh, that's why you get married, because had I not, I would have gotten overspray all over my nice clothes. So go get married so you don't destroy your clothing. All right, first thing we're going to do, clean it up with some alcohol so that the paint will actually stick to it. it dries really super quick. from overspray. I'm just going to go ahead and plug these guys into the holes just so I don't get paint all over the jacks. Now I'm just going to paint it. We're not going to make it any more complicated than that. Alright, it says i got to shake this for two minutes, so you guys probably don't want to watch this for two minutes. Alright, let's do a test spray. Make sure it's working. Yep, we're good. Camera's downwind. Let's do it. Okay, now we just got to wait a couple minutes and then coat it again. Alright, time for another coat. This is flat black. And we wait some more. All right, time to add the third and final coat. Hello. three coats we're gonna call that good and let it dry as you guys can see now we're waiting for the paint to dry all three coats of it um, I just drug out an old cardboard thing in the yard to do this figured that was the the best way every time I paint in the garage uh, make the whole house smell like paint my wife doesn't like that neither does my kid can't say I blame them but uh make sure when you're done spray painting that you clean out the nozzle on the can using 
some kind of mineral spirit or alcohol. And uh, note again that I'm sure a lot of you in the comments are going to be like, oh, you could have done this better and you could have done that better. And I look forward to reading those comments. But realize the goal of this project was to get me a breakout box on my desk on the cheap and using tools I already have. And uh, I didn't have the exact right size drill bit, so I had to get a little creative with augering it out. And I didn't have the paint, so I had to go pick that up. Um, and I'm not being careful to mask everything off because I really don't care if there's paint on these cables where you can't see them. But uh, other than being able to do a better job, I think this is actually turning out to be a pretty cool and fast project. So far, my total investment into it is probably about 45 minutes or an hour, including going to the hardware store to pick up the paint. So this is, this is moving along pretty quick. The cost of the cables varies. If you don't already have these extension cables, you can pick them up from anywhere from $2.99 on mono price all the way up to like $100 if you want monster cable. Um, these I got from Guitar Center. I think I paid 15 bucks for both cables and they're 10 foot long. And the project enclosure, I think I paid, I'm going to say 6 or $7 at Fry's Electronics. So my total investment in this project is, uh, you know, a little over 20 bucks. Well, with the paint, probably like 25 bucks. But um, honestly, I think that's a, that's a small price to actually be able to have a nice place to just plug your headphones and microphone in right up on your desk. All right. Well, we'll let this dry and then see how the final project turns out. All right, guys. So here's the finished product. Um, got a little anxious and didn't let the paint dry all the way, so it's got some fingerprints on it and stuff. So I'll, I'll repaint it at a later date. I really don't need it to look perfect. Um, but you can see, got the microphone and headphone in on the back. It's all plastic plugged. And I can bring the cables around from the back side. Plug them right in. So... I'm going to go ahead and hook this up to the computer and try it out for the first time. Alright guys, I got it all hooked up. I added some adapters. Got some of these guys to shrink it down to the mini jack. So now I can hook up the large type headphones or the small type from the box. Um, it goes down, around, behind my desk, and then into the STX on the back side. And it works perfectly. Let's plug that right in there. I'd say that's success. And I didn't notice any additional noise introduced by having the extra length of cable or any change in the volume, which is good. So, this has been another man cave project. Well, actually, this might actually be the first real man cave project. I don't think I did. I did some tips and tricks before, but this is the first, like, real thing we did. So, uh, might have to make a habit out of this. But now I can plug my headphones and my microphone in from my fancy new MMX 300s right there in the breakout box. I don't have to climb behind the computer every time. It's nice and convenient. Now I can put the plug wherever I want it so that I can hang the headphones up on the wall, which will be the next step. So hope you guys enjoyed this DIY on the Nerdgasm. I hope it gave you a Nerdgasm. Until next time.